And I want to begin with some general statements. All religions pray. So prayer is common. The Buddhists pray. The Hindus pray. The Muslims pray. The Universalists pray. Even the Satanist church pray. So prayer is not unique. Prayer is not unique to the church or religious people who are called Christians. In many cases, many religions pray more than Christian people. Now, whether they get answers is another question, but they pray more. I, I, I'm sure you are aware, you know, that religions like the Hindus, they would pray for hours. Uh, the Buddhists would meditate for hours and, and practice meditation for hours, and they would be trying to become one with the universe. And, and this meditative prayer, they can be sitting out uh, with their legs crossed, praying and meditating for days. And the Muslims pray at least three times a day. Wherever they are, they spread their rug on the ground and they face toward the east, where Mecca is, and they pray. Most Christians don't pray that much. So prayer is not the issue. Everybody does it. Of course, questions that come up in your mind. Uh, who are you praying to? What are you praying? And whether your prayer will be heard or whether it's being heard at all these are questions that are out there Christ himself told the Pharisees you pray and you think that you might be heard because of your much speaking he was talking to these Judaizers Judaism leaders who were praying to Jehovah the God you serve. But he says, you think you will be heard because you pray these long prayers. In other words, you can even be a believer in Jehovah and still not get your prayers answered. So it's not just the Muslim and the Buddhist and the Hindu and Confucius and all the others. Even the saints called the Christians could be praying and not get any answers because he said, your much speaking doesn't guarantee answers to prayer. And again, we learn in this Consecration that prayer has very little to do with how long you pray. Big words don't impress God. So prayer is common. Point number two, prayer is not an option for us. It is a necessity. God didn't leave prayer up to a decision that you make. He made it a command. Prayer is a command. You shall pray, God says. When you don't pray, you are disobedient. So you are about to enter into an experience that's going to make God very pleased with you. And when you bring pleasure to God, he then delivers what he promised. So prayer is a command. It's a law. It's a command. That leads me to point number three. Prayer is the most common experience of the believer. And what I mean by that is every time anyone gives their lives to the Lord, they are told they should pray. So every believer is encouraged to pray. It's the most common thing you are expected to do. But here's the problem. Prayer is the most talked about subject, but least practiced. We would rather sing in the choir than pray. We would rather be an usher at the door than spend time in prayer. We'd rather pay the, play the piano in church than pray. We'd rather work in the hospitality department or work in the nursery than spend time in prayer. In other words, we would want any other activity except, please don't tell us to pray. We kind of place prayer as the thing we do once in a while 
when somebody makes us feel guilty about it. But I hope that you will find out that prayer is not an option anymore. And you'll see it as your most important work. Why don't people pray? Here's my answer. Because of results. They don't get results. I was brought up in a religious environment just like you. And I always question this. Why is it that on Sunday mornings, for those of you who worship on Sundays, the church building is packed with people. And if you are a Sabbath worshiper on Saturday mornings, the church building is filled with people. And if you are a Muslim, you would find that during the worship times, everybody is in the mosque. But there's a problem, I notice. During the prayer meeting night, everybody gone. And the only people that attend the prayer meeting are some old women who ain't got nothing to do. We call them intercessors. What we really call, what we really mean by that is those who pray because we don't pray. That's an intercessor to you. Those who pray because we ain't got time to do it. The prayer meeting is always the smallest meeting in every church. Check it out. I mean, to have this many people in a prayer meeting right here, this is somebody's entire church. And I've gone and I've been in churches in my life where they had a lot of people on Sunday morning and prayer meeting is like 10 people. Question, why? The answer, because people don't get results. I think I'm just like you. If you keep doing something and it ain't working, you stop doing it. That's logical, eh? It's like going to a soda machine and putting in your quarters and hitting the bar and nothing comes out. You put some more quarters in, you hit the bar, nothing comes out. Now after four or five dollars, hopefully by then you figure out, I better leave this machine alone. But that's the way prayer is for most people. They prayed, They've gone to a prayer meeting. Sometimes, you know, you're a young Christian. You can't wait to get to the prayer meeting. You're excited. And then you, finally you figure out why the other folks ain't there. Because you ain't getting no answers to prayer. These old people praying, ain't nothing working. You ain't getting no responses. You don't see any evidence. There's no, there's no kind of re response to, from God. So you begin to say, this ain't working. And so you quit. That's why people don't pray. Because they don't get answers. But here is what I call the prayer principle. When you study the word of God carefully and God's action in history, you will come to a conclusion that John Wesley came to years ago. I thought he did a great job in expressing it. I understood it myself, but John Wesley said this. He said, it seems that without God, man cannot do anything on earth. But without man, God will not do anything on earth. Beautiful statement. Without God, man cannot. And without man, God will not. There's some things God wants to be done on earth for his kingdom. He wants his kingdom to come on earth. But he cannot do it without man, and man cannot do it without God. In other words, prayer is really a partnership between the divine and mankind. God needs you, and you need God. The point is, what happens on earth doesn't really depend on God. It depends on you. When I learned this, I became a prayer meeting, walking on two legs every minute. I pray all the time. I don't go to prayer meetings. I am a prayer meeting. Anybody who hung around me would hear me praying all the time. Suddenly I just say, Jesus is Lord. I'm praying. Jesus is Lord. I'm calling his ownership in my environment all the time. Why? Because God 
can do nothing on earth without a human giving him release. Let me quote a scripture that proves this. Jesus said, wherever any two of you shall touch and agree concerning anything on the earth, then it shall be done by your Father who is in heaven. Simple statement, profound implications. He's telling us that heaven wants to do a lot of things on earth, but heaven is waiting for at least two humans to get together and touch in faith and agree in prayer on something on the earth. Then God has permission to do it from heaven. So earth depends on heaven to get things done, but heaven depends on earth for permission to do it. So without you, God will not. That leads me to point number three. Prayer is really earthly license for heavenly interference. What is prayer? Think about what it means. Prayer is man giving God license to interfere in earth's affairs through man's agency of faith. God cannot do in earth what you don't believe he can do. Christ says, according to your belief, be it unto you. So what happens here depends on what we believe God can do. Many times when God met humans, he would tell them what he wanted to do. And then he would say this, do you believe I can do this? The word believe is the word pistis in Greek. It's the word we translate as faith. According to your faith, I can do it. One time the Bible says Jesus Christ went to his own hometown, Nazareth. But he couldn't do any miracles there because the people did not believe him. Now, can you imagine all the power of the universe was in a body walking in your village and can't heal you because you won't believe? What man does can block God or release God. For the next three weeks, you are going to become what I call a bigger and bigger and bigger pipe for God to flow through. Something good is going to happen on earth in the next three weeks. But if we don't meet, to agree, God can't release what he wants to do in the earth. So we give him license. That leads me to point number four. Write this down. Prayer is not an option, therefore, it's a necessity. Necessity means God depends on you to petition him so he could get something done that he always wanted to do in the earth. And this is why most of the time when you talk about prayer in the Bible, if you read a verse in the Bible concerning prayer, it begins with a letter, with a, with a word, with two letters. If. Most of the scriptures con concerning prayer begins with that word. If. Because it's a condition. There's a verse that religious people always quote when they want God to do something in their country. What's that verse? If my people. See, it starts with an if. But they don't read the whole verse properly. <laughs> like turning from your wicked ways, no more sweethearting. See, you know, they want God to heal the lamb, but they don't want to deal with them other conditions, see? Yeah. Always a condition. It is necessary for us to pray for God to do what he wants. And this is why when we talk about the keys of the kingdom, I want to read the words of Jesus himself, the king. Write these words down, please. In Matthew 6, verse 5, Christ, at the beginning of his ministry, laid down this priority. He said, and when you pray. That's enough for me right there. 
Everybody say it together. And when you pray. He didn't say if you pray. If I say to you, and when you come, you can get such and such a thing from my house. What am I saying? I even ain't asking whether you're coming, hey. You are coming. You're certain to come. Look at his words. He didn't say, if you find time in your busy schedule. He takes it for granted that you got this covered. And when you pray, he expects it. Everybody knows it, but we don't do it. And so we always relegate prayer to a small group of people who we say are intercessors. Now, an intercessor in the minds of religious churches is what I call professional prayers. <laughs> These are people who we have appointed, so to speak. Matter of fact, some of them are self-appointed. But we kind of have this group of people who are the ones who do what we should be doing, but don't do. And we use them to substitute for us. No one can do that. I can pray for you, but I can never substitute for you for praying. Here's something to remember. I was shocked when I discovered this. I was 17 years old. I was on a fast. And the Lord said this to me. There's no such thing in the Bible as an intercessory ministry. I started rebuking God. I said, my mother's an intercessor. <laughs> my mother prayed all the time. God said, yeah, but that ain't no ministry. There's no gift of intercession in the Bible. Find it. Doesn't exist. There's no gift of prayer in the Bible. There's gift of tongues, gift of miracles, but no gift of prayer. Do you know why? Because it ain't a gift. Everyone's supposed to do it. But we love intercessors because they take care of what we are guilty of. We, and we say to them, you pray for us. We're going to go and watch TV. So during prayer meeting evening, everybody is home drinking their switcher and watching television while a few old folks who ain't got nothing to do are praying. This is not God's will. Jesus said, men everywhere ought always to pray. All men everywhere, he says. Not a few chosen specialists. Prayer is not a ministry for the few. It's a necessity for the all. And don't get me wrong, people should pray for you. And I thank God that people pray for me all the time. I got people who intercede for me, and boy, I thank God for that. But they should never I should never think that they can replace my praying for myself. I hope this fast will change your attitude toward your prayer life. Prayer is a necessity. I want to put this up here for you to remember this, because some of you all got books on prayer in your house. Prayer books are like cooking books, cookbooks. How many of you got cookbooks in your house? Let me see hand. All cookbooks. Let me see hand. You got cookbooks in your house. Come on, wave high. Be honest. God looking for me. Tell the truth. Okay. Do you all use them? Don't you lie. You don't, you don't use them cookbooks. <laughs> Once in a while, you might want to find one, how to make one cookie or something. Now, those cookbooks been in your house for 10 years. And in those books are powerful recipes to produce beautiful products of food, but you don't use them. In other words, having a recipe and baking a cake is two different things. Studying prayer and praying is different. Having a good book by Finney in your house is nice, 
But are you praying? Finney prayed. <laughs> Charles Finney prayed. Oswald Chambers, powerful books on prayer. He prayed. You don't put this book on your coffee table so folks can see your beautiful prayer book and they think you are spiritual. <laughs> prayer books are for praying. You learn how to pray. The book I wrote on prayer is from my life. That's why people quote me. I write from my experience. I write from what God did for me. Because it has to be something that worked for me before I tell you it can happen. Don't just study prayer. Pray. Don't just read about prayer. Pray. Don't listen to other people's stories about prayer. Pray. That's what he expects. What is prayer? We'll deal with this a little later in detail, but I want to give you the definition before we go. The word prayer is the word petition. And the word petition means a legal appeal or demand on a government based on constitutional right protected by law. Complicated, but please write it down. Prayer is petition. Petition is a legal appeal or a demand that you place on a governmental authority. And that demand is based on a constitutional right. And the right is protected by law. That's what prayer is. That's what the word means in scripture. If you look at that statement, right away you can tell that you can't beg. Prayer is not begging for anything. Prayer is more of an appeal or a demand based on legal rights. 